Hey there, it's Jeff from Picture Time. Welcome back to the channel. And we've got another little accessory install on the 2020 Forerunner today. And I'm up here. I think I was in a little bit over my head on this one, so I had to call in some reinforcements. <laughs> Did you and have I'm, to call a friend? Dial yes, a friend? I phone a friend. This is my friend, Stefan. Say hi, Stefan. Hey, everybody. And Steph and I were in the same homeroom in high school together. I've known you since actually third grade. It's been a long time. Yeah, and it's now we have kids. In fact, your teenager is like helping us film today. It's crazy. But I want to install Raptor lights on the 2024 runner. A lot of people have done that. And there's a ton of videos out on YouTube. Now, wait, wait, Jeff, that's a safety thing, isn't it? Yes, it's safety. It's all about safety. Yes, yeah, safety. All right, mm -hmm. okay, just checking. Yep. Uh, but there's a lot of videos out there about to, how to do it and you can just wire them in and go into the fuse box or whatever. But I, I, I kind of like just, you know, you can stick a nine volt battery under the hood. Just twist the wires together. What do you, you think? could do that. But I no. actually, I wanted to get a little bit more creative. And so I, we got the seven Sparta Raptor lights on Amazon. I'm going to put a link in the description below of all this stuff. The only thing we ask in return for watching this video is you click the like button. But we've got these Raptor lights, they clip in. We're going to show you how to install those. But I also wanted to have them switched. And I got this little Raptor lights OEM style switch from 4Run Run on Amazon. I'll put that link in there as well. And I started looking at all the wires and then I read the description and it said, you must use a relay. Right. And I have no idea what a relay is. So this is where I went to the phone a friend. You own a company called Thor. You right. build LED video walls for churches and community centers and all this stuff. Yep. Since high school, you've been doing like <laughs> electronics and sound right. stereo system installs. So can you help me understand what a relay is? Absolutely. And then maybe you could help me install this in the car and we could explain to the folks how it all went together. No, I was planning on just laughing and watching you try to do it. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Just kidding. Yeah. So what's a relay and why do we need a relay? So a relay effectively is a switch, but it's a switch that is switchable. That may seem a little confusing. But the reason for using a relay is when you have a switch like this, there's only a, a certain level of current or power that can flow through this switch before it's gonna overheat and you, know, you don't wanna burn your truck apart. So with, with a small switch like this, it has small wires and it's meant for low current applications. And a relay, we actually have a large wiring harness here and this little guy here is actually the relay. This switch will apply power to the relay, which inside it has a little electromagnet. So once power is applied to the electromagnet, it pulls the switch that's inside of here. And this relay is good for up to 40 amps, which if you remember Back to the Future, you know, Marty McFly, he had all those KC highlights on the top of his Toyota. Yeah. Those things draw a lot of power. Now, the Raptor lights don't draw nearly as much power as Marty McFly's lights, but there's just safety in this, in that the only power that runs through this switch in the dash is just a few microamps to literally turn this switch on. So it's literally you turn this on, and then this goes click, and power goes through it. Got so it. that's what a relay is. Got it. It's really meant to give you access to more power you know, more current can flow through it than a switch like this can. Which is why the Forerun Run folks say you must use a relay because they don't want their switch to burn out. Overheat. Overheat, whatever. Yeah, the other yeah. thing in, in when you're talking about power and things like that is these have really thin wires and the longer the wire, imagine like a garden hose hooked up to your house. And if you've got a five foot hose, there's very little resistance to that water flow. Think of power the same way. If you now have a 100 or 200 foot hose, at the end of the hose, you're gonna have less flow and less power because of the resistance to flow in that hose. And wires are the same way. Sure. The thicker the wire, the more power can flow through it, as well as the, the, the length of the wire. So by putting a relay under the dash, closer to where the lights are and closer to where the battery is, we have a shorter run of wire for that power to reach those lights and there'll be less voltage drop. So voltage drop is the same thing as like the hose where there's less pressure. Sure. And that voltage drop means that your lights aren't gonna be as bright. So sure. by putting the relay in, keeping the wires shorter and using thicker wire, so the wire that we're using here in this harness that works with the relay 
is 12 gauge wire, which is significantly thicker. It's going to flow more current than the wires that are here on the switch. So that's, right. that's the second reason. The relay wiring harness we bought on Amazon, it's by Nylite, and it actually had a switch in it, which we're not going to use because we're going to use the four run run. Right, one. you're going to use the nice switch yeah. that is illuminated. Yes, exactly. Um, but also, just to say that although this particular install is on a 2020 four runner, the concept of wiring a lighting accessory through a relay and hooking it up to a switch should apply to any vehicle. Exactly. Really. Yep. And so you don't need, like this, I think this video would apply to Jeep owners. It would apply to anybody who wants to install any But accessory. probably not guys that drive Dodges. I don't think it'll work for them. You can, you, you, you go ahead and deal with the <laughs> Just Mopar kidding. guys. Just yeah. kidding. <laughs> but uh, thanks for watching. What we'll do is we'll narrate now through all the installation that we've done on this. And we'll, uh, we'll see at the end. We'll take it for a drive and show you how it looks. Awesome. Let's do it. Good. We started by removing the radiator support cover by pressing in the button in the middle of the little fasteners and then carefully removing all 11 of them. We then removed the cover and then began inserting the lights into the grill. So we'll go in this one. One, two, three, four. Got it, okay. The lights have a recessed tab on top and bottom and they only fit into the grill one way. I fumbled. Fumbled? I put it in the wrong way. But now we're good. We get all four lights clicked in and then fasten them to the attached wiring harness. One of the things we want to do when we're yeah. running the cables in the car is we want to avoid anywhere that the cable can get pinched, cut, or interfere with like the hood latch, anything like that. Yeah. So we've got these connectors, and the nice thing is, is these connectors are weather tight. And we also have spots, like when we go to a zip tie, there's spots in the body here. We can run a zip tie in. So Jeff, right here, we've got a zip tie around the factory location for these wires. Yep. All right, so we zip tied from here just to hold the cables up a little higher so that when you're looking at it through the dash, they're kind of a little bit more out of sight. We got all four Raptor light wires connected and then fed the main wire for all four lights behind the headlight and around the battery. Okay, so we ran the light wire all the way there. At that point, we're gonna cut that and, and tap, uh, tap it, into, tap the it into the relay. Yep. Before we put the cover back on, we just ran them to the battery. Temporary into the battery here to see that they work. And if I unhook, you can see that they're, they're working great. Now we'll get this back on. We'll get the clips on here. And Right. So next things, we need to get the relay mounted. Yep. And then we need to start feeding wires into the dash, and then we can tap in inside the vehicle. Great. All right, let's go. So this relay we got, the wires are super long. You've got the relay, and then you come down, and at lots the end... Lots and lots of extra wire. We, we, we could run two light bars from it. Right. Right here, we've, we've got a splice where it's, you know, likely soldered and then heat shrinked here. And this is where you'd have, you know, a first and then a second light. Again, we've got lots of length, but Jeff, we already installed the lights and we already ran the wire from those lights all the way up to right where we're gonna mount the relay, which is right here. Yeah. So we've got a perfect spot to bolt the relay in. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off all the excess instead of having all this excess wire just jumbled up. And then okay. what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire up the soldering iron along with some heat shrink tubing to have a clean solder joint just like they did here. So this is what we're going to end up with when we're done soldering. And then we're going to strip the minus and the plus. So now we've got clean, fresh wires to be able to solder. And we're going to do the same thing on the other end here. Now the other wires here on the relay, so this is what's going to power the lights. This has a fuse in it already. This is what's the power going into the relay. And then this connector here has another little harness that goes inside the vehicle and goes to the switch in the dash. The other thing that's really critical with any connections that are, I'll say, under the dash or in the front of the vehicle, this is where it's exposed to a lot of salt and, and water and humidity and heat and everything else like that. So corrosion is really gonna be the problem. And that's why I'm not using a crimp-on connector uh, because that's a point for failure that's why we're gonna go ahead and solder these, which is literally having a metal, a molten metal that will you know, weld these together. And that's a permanent connection that won't be affected by 
uh, the corrosion and things like that. But you that. certainly could use the crimp uh, method and heat shrink in it, and it would certainly be okay. You can, yes, you can. Um, I'm just living in Minnesota here with all the salt. Uh, I've seen the effects of a wire corroding and things stopping uh, working. So if you're living you know, down in Arizona or somewhere where you don't have the salt and, and all the moisture, yeah, you certainly could do that, that'd be fine. Uh, it's like all the connectors for the lights themselves you know, they had connectors, but they had gaskets on them and things to keep them, keep them dry. So Jeff, what we're doing here is I'm actually doing multiple pieces of heat shrink. I've got one large piece that I'm gonna put over this side of the wire and I wanna get it far enough away so it doesn't, you know, get hot from when I'm soldering. And then on this piece of wire, I've put smaller chunks on each of these so we'll cover the plus and the minus independently, and then we'll cover the whole connection with that big piece of heat shrink. We soldered the individual positive and negative wires coming from the relay and from the light together. We then covered those individual wires with heat shrink tubing, and then covered the entire connection with a larger piece of heat shrink tubing, sealing up the entire connection. We then extended the main power wire going into the relay with some 12 gauge red wire. We mounted the relay using an 11 millimeter bolt to the side of the car. We also attached the main ground wire for the relay to the vehicle using an existing location. From the relay, we hooked the ground up to the body here. And then now we need to figure out what's going through the dash. You've got your power. Yep. Right? And then this is for your switch. And then this is the three wires for the switch, that little plug. Which we have the switch here, and then the extension plug for that switch here. So this is the wiring harness that came on with the relay, goes here. And so these four wires are what we're gonna end up feeding through the dash. Yep, they're gonna head in, and we're gonna hook up to the switch, and then also to the ignition power on the fuse box inside the vehicle. Because right. what you wanted was for the lights to be able to turn on with the ignition. Right, the main relay power. Yep will go to ignition two, so that when yep. the ignition of the vehicle comes on, the system is powered. Exactly. Perfect. So we can't turn on the lights unless the ignition's on. Yep, yep. great. Okay. So we're gonna cut that off, trim this back, and we'll get it run through the dash. Now I cut the grommet that goes into the dash. So we're gonna push the wires through into the vehicle. So we're going with this one in. And then these guys here. And these three in. And when you get that back in, then you're gonna go ahead and run some silicone I'll, in there to... Yeah, to... I'll, I'll silicone it yep. so that... Beautiful. So we've gotta now feed these down into the dash, which let's get some light in there and then um, we can video where we're, where we're feeding. Perfect. We ran the wires through where we had removed the grommet and fed them down right behind the brake pedal. So what do we got here, Stefan? So what we're working on, Jeff, is this is the fuse panel that's under the dash, and this is going to have switched power. So, uh, you know, there's ignition, ignition two, you know, a bunch of different things here. So we're going to go ahead and pull one of the ones that says ignition to give that a try. And the beauty, we've put in the uh, add a fuse here. So again, it has two spots for fuse. And then this plugs in, and we've heat shrinked and soldered all this. So this is our power that goes out to the relay, and this is gonna just pop into one of those fuse locations under the dash here. Tail, panel, ignition, ignition two. So one, two, three, four. All right, so we pulled the fuse out, put it in here. They're both 10 amps. Yep. And then we'll just go ahead and plug on in right there in place. Now we'll get the wires zip tied and cleaned up here in a minute, but now we've got power out to the lights. After we connected power to our relay through the add fuse, we soldered and heat shrink the remaining wires for our dash mounted switch. All right, Jeff, so we've got the switch installed now and there are four wires on the switch and only three wires coming in. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about this. The green wire actually has another fuse here for the switch. So that's, this actually unscrews. And you can see it's got a tiny little, tiny little fuse right there. And that was on the four run run switch yep. wire harness. Yep. 
So we're gonna leave that in there. That's just one more layer of protection for the switch. Uh, it's, a, it's just a two amp fuse, so it's a real small guy, and that just screws together. So this is the power coming into the switch, and then the black, uh, the only reason the black wire is here is a ground for the switch, because the switch has two lights in it. It has a light that illuminates the little truck and a light that illuminates where it says Raptor lights. And that's why there's two reds. So the way this switch works is the power comes into the green and it comes out one of these reds. And when the switch is on, the truck lights up and then this red goes back out and powers the relay. The second red is actually the power coming back in to illuminate the part where it says Raptor lights on the switch. So that's why we hooked up both reds uh, together. So when the switch is on, it will illuminate. So Jeff, if you want to turn the vehicle on. So you can see that as we turn it on and off, both light up blue. And you could wire that separately so that the Raptor light this text could. underneath could be lit separately from the truck. We just chose to wire it together. Right, I would say most yeah. typically this would be hooked up to, let's say another switch or something in the vehicle where you'd have the dimmer lighted up anytime that the headlights are on, but the choice was made. We didn't want to cut into any of the factory wiring whatsoever on the vehicle, being that it's a brand new vehicle. Uh, we're not gonna have any issues with warranty and things like that. So everything we did here is independent wiring and even that add -a fuse can just simply be unplugged. So we haven't cut any factory wires, we haven't done anything to damage the vehicle other than put a hole in a grommet, which you've siliconed up. So we're gonna get this uh, switch installed into the dash and get these wires uh, zip tied so they don't get caught by Jeff's foot when he's flooring it or going up the mountains. We carefully pulled straight back on the factory switch panel, exposing the factory switches. We popped out the dummy switch and inserted our Raptor switch. The fit initially on the Raptor switch wasn't great and it would stay in the on position. So we popped it out and added a little bit of gaffer's tape around the switch to help it to seat better in the factory switch location and allow for better actuation of the switch. We zip tied all the cords up there and then we got the grommet pushed back in. If you kind of see, push the grommet back in. The lights have been in for a few days and we're really pleased with how they came out. I like that we took the power from a location that was only on when the ignition was on. This prevented us accidentally leaving the lights on after the vehicle was off. It also allowed us to run the lights independent from the headlights or fog lights, which is what we wanted to do. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching. Please like, please subscribe, please participate in the comments, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.